So now that we have hosted AppSmith, let's move on to the next one, which is AppWrite. So AppWrite, what is AppWrite? It's a, it does multiple things from what I've uh, briefly checked out. Um, you can use it for authentication. You can use it for, as a, I believe, a REST API. Um, it is quite versatile. So yeah, you can use it for storage, messaging, cloud functions, and even, I think, to set up databases. Anyways, we'll test it out. But first things first is uh, obviously to host it on our server. So offline, I have actually changed the server name. I've now called it self-host everything. And so let's add a project to that server. I'm going to call it app write. Continue. And we're going to select the production environment. We're going to add a resource, which is obviously going to be app write. And here it says a back a backend as a service platform that simplifies web and mobile app development. So we are going to check that out. So we're going to select self host everything as the server. And now we have once again our service information. So we've got a MariaDB with some credentials which come um, as a by default and we've got a lot more services here actually so we've got and it's no surprise with how um, complex it seems to be so we've got some real-time service audits webhooks deletes database we're not going to go through all this um, what's relevant is going to be the links so I'm going to get rid of the wildcard string that was added there automatically and let's just save it to app rights and then I will do the same thing um, this is interesting this this one also has a link but it should be this I, I will make it the same because I think it's just a slug that changes so we're gonna make it the same and uh, we'll try both links of course so again the environment variables I don't think we need to do anything here but as you can see, there is a lot, a lot going on in this service stack. So let's deploy and check it out. And look at that. I think it's done. And what a beast of uh, deployment. Look at the amount of containers and volumes that we've got here. Very interesting. So let's see what we have got. Let's go to the deployed URL, appright.selflesseverything.com. Again, I'm going to skip this. Actually, I probably need to enter in um, some default user here. So I'm going to take a look at this and see how to get started. Okay, so all you had to do was actually sign up. There wasn't any setup that you needed to do, like any pre-created account. You just sign up with uh, your details, and then now we're in AppRite. So let's call this organization self host everything. Obviously, you use your own uh, name. Uh, what is this? Organization ID, leave blank. Okay, we're just going to get an automatically generated one. We don't care. And so now we've got, so first of all, let's appreciate the fact that we have this beast of a application um, hosted already. And uh, let's create a project, we're gonna call it test. And so it looks like you can even invite people to this. Okay, so add a platform. Um, let's see what we're going to do here. So I went ahead and created an application just to test to see what exactly is going on. Basically, you would create a project, create a name for your project. Let's say you call it more specifically instead of a you know test two, call it like the name of your uh, website, for instance. 
And then uh, let's say that your website is built in Next.js, so you're going to click on web. Actually, let me see if there's another option. Um, no, we're just going to go with web. And let's say you're, yeah, you've got some Next.js project, and you're going to deploy it perhaps on Vercel, but you will have your own custom domain, so you go .com, I guess. Um, still not too sure about this one, but let's continue. And then basically inside your you know Next.js um, application, you're going to install AppRights, the package, NPM package. And um, you can also use a CDN if you didn't want to use NPM. And then you import it. And after you've done importing it, you need to initialize it. So you initialize it with this um, string. Obviously, in my case, um, um, I'm not going to be doing this directly. But um, this is um, what you need to do is quite straightforward. Like if you're in Next.js, you just put this in perhaps um, a, um, a provider's component or um, I, I guess a provider's component would be a, uh, a good, um, I guess a, a provider's component would be a good spot for this. So then once you're all set, you basically go to the dashboard and you'll be able to see some, you know, some statistics. Obviously, since you just set it up, you won't see anything valuable. But um, once you've got uh, your project set up, you can view your settings down there. But um, you can then start using AppRite's other, um, well, their actual uh, services. So we've got authentication. We've got, and actually, let's just create a user just to see. Um, actually, create a user to get started. Let's try. Uh, an email. We'll just John Doe. I don't know if somebody has this email, or we'll put example.com. Uh, password. Okay, so this is a sign-in user, it seems. Um, let's see what's going on here. This almost reminds me of Auth0, actually. So in Auth0, you can have users who also, once they've uh, authenticated with Auth0, uh, somehow, then they'll be added to a, uh, a list, so kind of like a database, and you'll be able to see them. This is very similar to that. So there you go. You, you kind of get an off zero um, for free. So you won't get all the information of how to integrate this um, directly on this platform. You have to go to their documentation, of course, completely normal. And uh, the first thing you, you see is, um, in this case, how to do it with JavaScript, for instance. So you have your your uh, initialization code, and it looks like you add an, ac um, an account, or you create an account instance using the client, and then you create a session. Very similar to other authentication strategies. So I'm not going to go too in depth there, but basically just know that you have your own instance of, let's say, Auth0 in AppRite. So if you wanted to, and this makes total sense actually, because as a, it markets itself as a backend as a service. And what do your, does your backend typically need? You need authentication, you need a database, and sometimes you might need serverless functions. And so this is why we've got the functions. And it also adds storage and uh, messaging. So let's move on to the database. So you can add a database here. And uh, again, you can have an, an ID for your database. Let's see what it does. So it says you just created a database. So yeah, it looks like you can just then proceed to adding collections. Let's say this is a furniture business. So you have some tables, maybe you go or products, we'll say products. You create a products collection. So I've got my collection name. I need to create attributes of my collection. So Let's say my product has got a name. Say 35 um, is, is how much we expect the name to be. 
Uh, and then the default string, uh, we're just going to put it null. It's required and create. So now we've got uh, our products going to have a name. They'll probably need an image as well, which could be a URL. So image that's probably not required. Uh, name URL, but if we did need to change it, it looks like we can. And it looks like you can also create indexes so that they're easier to, so that uh, it's easier to uh, search. So this is a really a fully featured database solution. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to spin something up very quickly, I can see how AppRight would be super helpful. And then you've got functions that you can create. So you can connect a Git uh, repository, which is neat because then if you make changes to your um, repository, it probably automatically can uh, update the function, which is probably ideal. In this case, I don't want to go that route. So it's probably just simpler just to do a, a node, uh, use node and create a simple test function. Looks like we can add an entry point. So I'm guessing this is going to be some sort of a, a URL for it, perhaps. So let's go with test. Let's see what happens. Oh, so it wants the function source code. I don't think I'm going to add a specific test file for this, but um, I think it's quite simple to set up. Um, it's just a shame that you can't just create a blank function and then start writing code. I feel like that would be way simpler. Maybe there is a way, but I'm just doing it wrong. I'm not sure. Let's try again. No. So I, I need to click and drag a, a file. Fine. Uh, for some other time, and let's move on and, and see what messaging is all about. So looks like you can create specific types of messages. So email, oh, that's cool. So you could send messages as emails, push notifications, or SMS. Very neat. Let's try this. It's like you can use HTML as well. Okay, and then select topics or targets. Obviously, we haven't created any of these, so there's nothing to select. So you can have, probably need a provider as well. Uh-huh, yep, you need to link up, you can link up an SMTP server or SendGrid and Mailgun, and then you add a topic. Let's just um, see what a topic is about. So on this test topic that I've just created, it could be, I don't know, uh, you know, an outreach, like an email outreach uh, topic, or um, maybe your first login um, group, let's say. I'm not too sure, but let's say we add somebody to this topic we can then now theoretically create messages for this individual. Well, obviously, we, where do we not have SMTP set up? But if we did, we could send a specific message. Let's say, like you know, server maintenance, uh, and then you have a specific message for that. You could send that to. Um, well, I'm still not getting my. Mm, ah, so I in here I'd probably need to set up the, the targets. So perhaps the like where is this getting sent to uh, with? So if I, I use my SMTP server, maybe that's the, where I select that, and then we'd be able to send a message to um, to uh, this particular message to the people that uh, to the topics that we have selected, which is very neat. It sounds like you could use this as a newsletter as well perhaps. Um, so like if you have a, a bunch of people subscribed to your newsletter, um, maybe you could also set it up so that you can create messages like this. 
Although I don't, I don't know exactly if that would be optimal, but just an, uh, just a thought. But even for maintenance, messages, things like that, it's quite neat actually. And so finally, let's test out this storage because this sounds very Amazon-esque. So let's see what uh, what we can do here. Test buckets. And as you can expect, you can add files. So we're going to add the AppSmith logo. And that's it. But what I'm curious about is, once this is done uploading, is um, I want to find out how you can access this file. Because on Amazon, you can obviously add policies to restrict how people can access your your files. So I'm just curious about, so you can add some restrictions on what is uploaded. You can add some security. Um, okay, so it looks like there is a security feature here. So that not, so you can do it so it's not a public uh, bucket. Let's say it's public in our case. The next thing we want to learn how to do is how do we, let's say we wanted to use this particular image or logo in our app, how do we do that? So it looks like you can use the SDK to do CRUD operations, so get, delete, update, and uh, well, read, create, read, update, and delete. And um, yeah, so you can use your bucket ID, the file ID, and uh, you can also use the name if you'd like. So quite straightforward. So very neat. I like the simplicity. I think that's one thing that I'm noticing with AppRite. It's very, very simple and straightforward. Because even with Auth0, it's actually quite um, daunting when you want to integrate it. But this seems like it's going to be quite easy to, um, to set up. Um, same with the database. I mean, this is very simple. You just add it. Your, you create your database and you start adding collections to that database. Functions, we didn't really get to use that, but also seems quite straightforward as long as you have your function on, in, in a file. And then messaging, which was not what I expected, actually, pleasantly surprised. Um, and storage, so very neat. I'm definitely thinking of using AppRite at some point for a uh, test project. Um, if you guys have uh, ideas on what to do, uh, that'd be great. So add it as a comment or something like that. And I'll see you in the next one.